So here's a problem on the order of operations dealing with positive and negative numbers. And I know that usually a problem like this, you might be tempted to use a calculator to solve it, which is fine. It's just you have to be very careful when you're entering negative numbers on a calculator. Because it depends what type of calculator you have and how that calculator will deal with the negative numbers that you enter in. And specifically, how and where you enter parentheses. So let's solve this without a calculator uh, and, and see if we can figure it out that way. So here first we have 5 times negative 10. And this little asterisk here means multiplication. So what this is saying really is you have 5 groups of negative 10. So imagine that we had a chip and that chip represents negative 10. And this is some kind of debt or something like that. Well now we have a problem where it says take 5 of those and what do you have? Well, if I have five groups of negative 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, here I have five groups of negative 10. Add them up, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I have negative 50, right? So here, this is negative 50. Now what I'm going to do is rewrite the entire equation from left to right setting it up and we're almost there and this is multiplication times 1 and here we're, we're not sure if it equals 52 but we'll get there so now what do we do? Well, we want to do with the parentheses first so negative 4 and negative 3 well imagine that you had 4 negative chips 2, 3, 4 and then you add 3 more negative chips so that, that means you literally take these three chips right here and combine them with these four right here, although I drew five. I don't know why I did that. Let me quickly cross this one out. So again, adding these four and these three is to put them together in a group. That was weird. Oh boy. Let me show this again. One, two, three. So I'll say it one more time. Adding these two combines them together into one larger group of seven chips. So this gave us negative 50. Now this part will give us negative 7. With this negative number here, there's nothing to do in the parentheses. So in a moment I'll combine that by multiplying it by 1. Um, and here there's nothing to do with this negative 2, so I'm just going to rewrite it in the parentheses. There's nothing to do there, it's just a number inside the parentheses. Now we have negative 50 plus negative 2 minus negative 7 plus, well, what do we do with this one? Uh, this is going to equal uh, 11 squared times negative 1, which is negative 121. Now this is a tough one, um, and this might be, especially where our calculators lead us to the answer we don't want. When you see this, think of an exponent as being sticky, where it sticks to the number right here and only the number next to it. So this means 11 squared, and then apply the negative sign. If you wanted to square the whole in negative 11, it would be written like this. Notice here, now the whole thing, 11 and the negative signs in parentheses. And there's a background to this, and I will make a video about it. I'm just asking you here to trust me on this one. This right now means 11 squared, and then apply the negative. Or, in other words, take 11 squared, and then multiply it by negative 1. And a positive number times a negative is a negative. If you think of what 121 would be times negative 1, that's what we have here, 11 squared is 121 times negative 1. This is like saying uh, take 121 groups of negative 1. So if you had one negative chip, two negative chips, eventually you would get 121 negative chips. And that's negative 121. And now negative 1 and 1, well what's one group of negative 1? Well that's negative 1. So plus negative 1. So now what I can do, I only have addition and subtraction left, so I'm going to work from left to right. What is negative 50 plus negative 2? Well, here again, think of these chips. If you have 50 red chips or negative chips, and then you add two more negative chips, you have a total of 52 negative chips. Right? You're just grouping more and more negative chips. I'm going to rewrite this part of the equation in a simpler format. Subtracting a negative right, is adding. So this is really plus 7. Think back to subtracting uh, a negative is adding because you're taking away something bad. So you're really adding good. And now 
adding negative 121 is the same as subtracting 121. And then adding another negative 1 is the same as subtracting another negative 1. If you add a negative, you're really subtracting. Think about a simple example, 3 plus negative 1. Well, 3 plus negative 1, right, we have 3 here. We add negative 1, we go to the left once, and that brings us to 2. When you add negative, you move to the left, you lose value. Well, since 3 minus 1 is also 2, that means that these two things must be equivalent. So 3 plus a negative 1 and <clears throat> 3 minus 1 are identical. So now we can get somewhere. If I have negative 52 plus 7, what does that mean? Well, let's look at the number line. I'm sitting here at negative 52, and if I add 7, I count up 7 this way, adding 7. And that brings me to negative 45. So I'm going to rewrite this. Negative 45 minus 121 minus 1. And we're almost done here. Let me clear some of this out. Oops, clear this out. We're running out of room. I want to finish this problem in a way that we can actually read it. So let me clear this. Okay. So now we have negative 45 minus 121 minus 1. What is negative 45 minus 121? Well, I think of, again, the number line. If I have negative 45 over here and I'm taking 121 away, that really means I'm adding 121 in the negative direction, right? Taking 121 away. So what will that be? Well, that would be 45 plus 121, that total distance. But the answer will be negative. So really what I want to do is add 121 and 45. And I get 166. So this is 166 negative 166, sorry, and then minus 1. Well, that's going to decrease this by 1 to give me negative 167. So here, I don't think that I agree with the answer of 52. I get instead negative 167. All right, hope